Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about how I made this training set here. There's actually 10 models in total but I'm just showing 5 of them here and you'll see the process as I go through. This is all part of the Atlas Empires project that I'm doing at the moment. I've put all these things into a playlist so you can check that out in the links in the description and of course there's a link to the website for Atlas Empires. I'm very excited, I've seen my uh, models in the game now and uh, they're looking really great. Uh, it's just so exciting to see your work or your hard work paying off and actually uh, in-game uh, being exciting, being playable. It's great fun. Uh, so you can see that I'm sort of part way through here and uh, I've brought some models in from some of the other sets and I'll be baking the textures onto this map. Um, I like to be able to bake the textures in case I need to edit them in any way. Uh, lots of them are quite modular. It speeds the workflow up, but it doesn't create more texture space. And to remind people, in case you haven't seen any of this before, I'm working on 512 by 512 pixel maps. And uh, well, actually, I'm working on 1000 by 1000, so 1024 by 1024, uh, but it's all getting reduced down to 512 by 512. And then all those maps will be put together into one big 2K texture. Uh, so each set will be a small part of that 2K texture. That's the thinking anyway. The projects are taking me about two days to model and texture. It does depend on the set and the complexity and how much of it's kind of repeated. So obviously a lot of these things are just repeated. I'm using uh, link duplicates uh, so that I only have to texture one. Once I've actually uh, set up the UV maps though, I can unlink them if I want to change anything. But the texture still uh, has the same space, so you can't, uh, let's say, put some shadows on and then turn it upside down and then paint the shadows on the other side. That just doesn't work. One piece of advice that I've uh, had is perhaps doing sort of two models. So if there's uh, logs or something like that, do a couple and do the shadows on the bottom of one and the shadows on the another side of the other so there's a bit of variation which does work but it uh, reduces my texture space so I've got to be a bit careful adding too many uh, different models taking up texture space so it's quite a fine line and a fine balance I'm quite pleased because recently I spoke to the lead artist Chris Handlauser and T was saying that they've managed to figure out how to get some lighting in there without the expense of too much sort of processing power so so there will be one directional light in the scene which will make a huge difference. I was worried that the models were looking a little flat. Uh, because of the modular approach it's hard to do some shading. Uh, so I'm quite pleased about that. So you can see the way I'm going through this. It's fairly straightforward, the modelling aspect. And you just have to kind of get used to how far you need to go with the models and how far you can paint on. Because obviously you're painting highlights and shading and uh, getting the crevices with the brush and the texture rather than the model itself and I see a lot of beginners making the mistake of going really high poly uh, but you just don't need those polys there uh, you can go very very low poly it's surprising how far you can go I keep it on flat shading whilst I'm modeling but I will convert them all to smooth shading eventually and all the textures will therefore be doing the shading if that makes sense so the edges will be highlighted rather than any shading happening from the lighting at all. I'm still really enjoying the project. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for me to practice my texture drawing and the low poly modeling. And it's just really great fun seeing your projects and pieces of art in a game being used. It's fantastic. In many ways, people would see this as quite repetitive work but I really enjoy that repetition because I need to practice these different things. I kind of see this in two ways. I'm looking at it in terms of just hours that I'm spending drawing, modeling, which is really good for me and good for my sort of personal growth in terms of becoming an amazing artist, which I want to be. But it's also really great to just see your results in a game. So to sort of reiterate the point about not having to go too far with your models, you can see I've made a cylinder for the base here. I could have even kept it at just a cylinder, but I wanted a bit of variation. So I've gone uh, slightly with some extrusions outwards uh, to add sort of a blockiness to it. So it's not completely cylindrical. And then I can just paint on the details of the rocks. Uh, lots of people put in the details. It's not really necessary. Sometimes you might want to uh, perhaps put a bevel on a few rocks just to sort of smooth them out 
uh, but generally you can sort of create a bit of variation by using the proportional edit tool and just move a few vertices around and you're absolutely fine. It possibly ended up a tiny bit uniform, the base of the um, training ground, but I think it's fine. And again, they're not viewed really close up, so a few tiny bits here and there, which I'm not so happy with, aren't such a big deal. To reduce the texture sizes as well, I've had to mirror lots of objects. You can see lots of the cylindrical things. I've just cut them into quarters and I only paint one quarter and obviously that's mirrored around the edge. That's a common trick with low poly modeling uh, using a sort of mirror, uh, certainly mirroring your textures that is. Uh, you obviously apply the mirror in the end, but your texture space is still sharing the same space. So I'm finishing off the last pieces here and you can see all the model sets together and then I go in and UV unwrap. So I go into every object and just unwrap it as if it was just a normal object. At the end of that process, which is quite a long process going through each single model and unwrapping, but at the end of that process I then select them all and unwrap them once again. So I go through unwrapping each individual object, actually unwrap it uh, so I can see that the UVs are working and how they're split up and then select everything and unwrap again. And that will put it all onto one map for me so that I can start painting. That's where the link duplicates are important. I only take one of the link duplicates and unwrap it and that applies it to the rest of them. So hopefully you can get some idea of the unwrapping process from this. In a way it's not actually too important because I'm painting on the textures. So when you're painting on the textures, your seams aren't as visible because they kind of paint over and the software site kind of interprets the seam and it's seamless but it does help to have nice big islands that are sort of reasonably set out. I know that's a very vague way of looking at it but if you sort of set out your islands then if you need to change any of your textures you can easily select them in another program like Photoshop or GIMP or whatever it might be and at that point you could edit them. Let's say all the logs needed to be a darker brown then I could select all the browns in the image and just bring the browns down in photo editing software of some description. It's interesting in the painting process you can really start to see my pixels when I zoom in close so uh, it is very small and this is double the size at the moment so it's going to be reduced even further but once you're from a certain distance it's absolutely fine so for mobile game assets uh, you don't need really high resolution maps. Someone was asking me if I could go into detail with the shield. I will do a shield painting tutorial fairly soon. Uh, so uh, that's on its way. I try and save my texture after I've painted an object. Each time, save my texture and resave my texture. And I'm trying to get into a habit of doing that. You don't want to lose your textures. But I haven't had many crashes at all in Blender 2.8, so I'm really impressed. Uh, they do it, they've done a fantastic job with it. It's, it really is a fantastic program, and I'm looking forward to 2.81 actually, with all the new tools that are coming out there as well. Now one of the painting tools I'm really impressed with is the color um, blend mode or blend brush, so you can just paint a color on and not affect any of the underneath textures, so I really do like that. It's a tricky one. I don't think I've shown the baking process here because that is very dull and it doesn't really come across in a time lapse. Um, but it was a tough one with the UV maps because obviously in order to bake something you need its original map and create a new UV map to place it in a different location on a new image. <laughs> don't panic if you don't understand that because it's not something you really have to do that much in terms of transferring um, the bake from one to another. Uh, but in this case I have. Uh, but it's strange with the naming conventions in terms of uh, Blender and UV maps. I don't quite understand. I feel like there's a bug there actually, um, but it's. Uh, but I have figured it out in the end, but maybe I'll do a separate tutorial if people want it. In terms of the painting, I'm not so sure about this crack that I did down here. Uh, I'm not that happy with it. It looks okay, but I don't think it really adds anything and it wasn't really necessary. Uh, but it is good to experiment. I can obviously just scrub these things out if necessary. And it's possibly too much detail because remember this is seen from a distance and they're quite small on your phone screen so um, adding too much detail is kind of wasted uh, and it can actually clutter an image as well so you have to be a bit careful. 
You can see that uh, I've had to go around and reset some of the UVs. I might have missed something when I selected all and unwrapped. Occasionally I try and hide objects so they don't interfere with each other um, and then I can miss them. Which is quite useful having a bit of spare UV space just in case. And there is, uh, I know that seems like a waste, but it is really useful. You don't want to have to create another 512 map uh, to put into your game. Uh, that would be more texture calls and things like that. Uh, draw calls or something, I think they're called. Uh, so you don't really uh, want to be doing that. So adding or leaving yourself a little bit of space is probably going to be very useful. And it has uh, got me out of holes a couple of times, suddenly realized that there's one object I haven't unwrapped. And I don't want to have to bake everything across to a new map again and unwrap everything. It does take a lot of time and a lot of fiddling about. It's a lot to think about when you're doing that and it can be very distracting. Now it's very rare that I go across and paint in the painting space uh, in the sort of uh, image view across there. I always paint on the objects. Uh, generally speaking, but when you've got a small circular object like a rope, it's really hard to sort of loop around it. So it's actually much easier. And that's why it's really helpful to unwrap properly. If you don't unwrap properly, you haven't really got that option. Let's say I select it all and did a smart UV project. It would cut everything up into little pieces and it can be really awkward. So proper unwrapping is very helpful. For some reason, I really like painting things like barrels and chests and stuff. So I really enjoyed doing this one. Uh, it's cut into quarters, so I can only paint quarter of it. And that's obviously repeated across to the other quarters. And it does cause problems if you try to add any detail. So you may notice that a lot of my things haven't got that fine detail that uh, you might see in texture painted or texture art or really nice texture art. Uh, but it's just impossible really to do that if you want to bring everything down into a small texture space. If I add details, it's going to be repeated and therefore you're going to see the sort of repetition uh, and it will look like um, a bad texture really. It's useful for things like the uh, rivets on the um, iron uh, and that works well, I think. But if you look at the distance it'll be viewed from, again, there's no point in putting those details in. So in the concept art, there were a few of these stones that were sort of jutting out of the base of the training ground, uh, which looked quite nice. So I sort of added them in. It's difficult though, because again, you can't do the shading very easily. So I had to be very careful with how I place them. And I am trying to keep to the original concept art as much as possible. It makes it easier to do that uh, because you don't really have to think about the design at all. It's lovely having a piece of concept art and I'm just trying to kind of realize that into a low poly form. And it's really nice concept art. I do like it. So uh, there's no need for me to try and adapt anything or change anything. The only time I need to change things is when it isn't working so well as a low poly object. So occasionally there's objects that you think, well, oh, that's going to be really tough and that's not gonna quite uh, work as low poly, uh, or I don't feel like I can realize that. So occasionally I change things, uh, but Chris is really um, happy. I think we've got a good relationship, so um, I think he respects my um, ideas and understanding of how to realize these things. I'm really enjoying working with the team, actually. They're really positive, and it's just nice uh, creativity and a nice vibe happening. Uh, so that's always fantastic, isn't it, when you've got that going on as well. I'm thinking of doing a few blog posts about this as well. I have done blog posts in the past where I talk about working as a freelance and that sort of thing. So if you're interested in that, then do comment below. I do read all the comments, so I'm really interested in what you would like to see. Obviously, I'm just sort of going through a methodical approach with this and just sort of showing time lapses. Uh, but occasionally I break it down as well, uh, given the comments that I get about what people want to see. So uh, I'm, I'm finding the whole process quite uh, fascinating and would like to do some blog posts. I'm going to have a bit more time uh, soon to do more things like that as I'm cutting down on my teaching work a touch. So hopefully I can pick up more on these sort of YouTube videos and things. It's been fairly tough actually trying to manage YouTube, a freelance job and teaching. So uh, it's good that I'm sort of working it out and trying to figure out how to fit these things in. I consider myself really lucky to have three positions that kind of complement each other. Uh, so they're all sort of bouncing off each other and it's really nice to have that. I suppose whilst looking back at this, I think the major things to be able to paint is uh, rock, wood and metal <laughs> as I go through this. So if you're ever doing any practice or anything like that, practice rock, wood and metal and you'll be a good artist, I think. Like I've said, there's lots of repetition to this, but I feel it's a really good thing. It's just 
me putting in lots of hours and becoming a better artist, so I'm loving doing it. And at times you just get a bit tired of doing the same thing, but it doesn't matter because you're learning and you're picking up new techniques. I do think it's really important as well, and I do do a lot of looking around at other people's artwork and how they've approached things. Even though I feel like I've got a technique now, I still look at other people's work and that's really important to me. So there's the finished result. I hope you're enjoying these uh, series. Do comment below and let me know what you would like to see. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.